All right, it's time for another video. Did the intake manifold gasket fix my problem? Well, it kind of did. It ran really, really good, smooth. But once it warmed up and water got in the cylinders, it uh, the idle went sideways. So uh, I'd take it apart again, unfortunately. But uh, that's okay. Uh, when I pulled the intake manifold off, I was replacing uh, O-rings, seals, and paint and stuff. So it didn't take me as long, and I just dropped the bracket off with the power steering pump, left it on there. Because there's some studs that come out on the head that hold that in place, so I could just lay that down. Uh, story on the heads was, this uh, head here is brand new. The uh, other head had cracked from the... Uh, I believe it was the exhaust manifold guide all the way to the bolt and uh, about cracked the head in half so I had to buy a brand new head these 5.0 heads are really starting to get hard to find everybody's doing the five sevens which I understand these five O's don't get much love but they're good little engines they're not powerhouses but their low end torque is really good I think that's why they put them in these four-wheel drive Cheyennes so I've got my rocker arms ready to go I marked my uh, intake with a little bit I use um, liquid paper to mark things so I marked it so when I adjust the valves with GM you start at top dead center and uh, well with a vortex you stop you start at top dead center and then you adjust certain ones then you rotate it 360 degrees and then you adjust uh, the ones that you didn't do so I didn't want to make a mistake about which one was what so I did that and I'm getting a little bit of flash rust but I don't care about that that oil will take care of that of course I painted the head with high temperature paint I got the exhaust manifold back on I used new fasteners those were crusty these are a grade 8 uh, bolt and you only torque these down to 22 foot pounds so there's not a lot of torque on it now uh, let me get over here I've got my plugs in, and like I said, and if you've watched it in the past, there's a bunch of idiots that had this vehicle. The, uh, the ones you're supposed to put in it are these, and they had the R45s in it. I don't know why, but they were the wrong plug, so this is the same plug you put in the 5.7s. So uh, we got the correct plugs for it. And... Uh, I put a little bit of oil on my ceiling surface. There's a place where there's a little bit of flash rust, but I got a light stainless steel brush. There's oil on it now, but I'll clean that off whenever I go to uh, reassemble it. So everything was good. Now the other head, uh, it was fine. He just went ahead and redid it since this other one was new. Now there was two cylinders on that side that leaked, and then number six, that thing was full of water. And then number four right beside it had water in it too. Now that block uh, check uh, fluid that I've got and uh, it didn't show as a blown head gasket. So it must have been old. There must be a shelf life on it. So I'm, I threw it away and I bought some uh, new stuff at AutoZone. It comes in a black bottle. They're real sensitive to light. So uh, I had to buy some. Uh, a kid that's staying here with my son bought a uh, 2007 Explorer. And it turns out it's got a blown head gasket. So it worked on that one. So we got, but if I have to let it sit for a while, I'm just going to throw it away and, and buy new. Because I'm not going to take any chance. But I had a sneaky suspicion it was a head gasket. I was just hoping on hope that uh, the intake manifold, because these intake manifolds are kind of hinky on these vortexes. So, so it was a little bit more work. But that's all right. I want it to be correct. I did something really stupid. I'm going to tell you guys. You're going to laugh at me. On my Suburban, I went to put some more gaskets and parts in the back of it. And I noticed my heads were starting to get quite a bit of flash rust everywhere. So I went ahead and pulled them out, cleaned them up real good, painted them. And I took them inside to set and dry. And when I went to bolt this head back on, I mistakenly grabbed that 5.7 head and... Uh, I knew which ones were what because 
like I said, I, I did that for uh, adjusting the valves. I got it torqued down to 22 foot pounds. I was fixing to zip everything up, and I finally noticed because the head slipped on there real good, matched up the pins, looked good. I was fixing to cover everything up, and I noticed I did that. That was stupid. I walked in there and didn't even pay attention to it. Uh, that was dumb on my part. I didn't take a chance on the head gasket. I threw it away and the head bolts, I threw it away. It was only $34. I don't have to do this shit again for a long time. So, uh, that was dumb on my part. Oh, well, you make mistakes. If you don't do anything, you don't make mistakes. So, it's the way I look at it. All right, let me get to the next part. I right, we'll talk a little bit about gaskets. These intake manifold gaskets, and I mentioned it on my Suburban video, uh, get the ones that had the metal backing and with the rubber. I'm going to reuse those because this is just a little bit of rubber and it only stayed clamped down uh, overnight when I figured out the head gaskets were blown and the heads were cracked. Oh yeah, and the head on this side did have a little crack, but it was in a place they could repair it. So uh, everything's good on that. But get these ones, they're Felpro. I only use Felpro gaskets. But get the one with the metal. These are going to last a heck of a long time. Then I marked which side I took them off of, so. But get these ones here. These are, I mean, these are fantastic. So, let's see. Next, uh. All right, exhaust manifold gaskets. Get the one that's got the little loop right there, because you can put your bolts in each end, and it drops down and holds in place, and it makes it a hell of a lot easier to get all these done. So this is another Felpro gasket, but uh, that sure made it a lot. It only took about 10 minutes to get that thing torqued down. Uh, did that. That was an easy, easy job. Also, on head gasket, uh, let's see. You can see the number. This is a uh, called a problem solver head gasket. It's, it's made to uh, help with the little inconsistencies and things like that. And I bought that because... I couldn't get the top of the block decked, and I had to clean this off real good. There's a crosshatch pattern, and uh, it took me almost a whole day to get this off. I used a razor blade, razor blade, razor blade. Then I took my die grinder with kind of a, um, oh, a uh, Scotch-Brite pad. And I used it lightly because uh, you don't want to damage the metal. Uh, the pistons have a little bit of carbon on it. I'm not a big fan of scraping all this stuff off and missing it because carbon's really, really hard, and I don't want to scar my pistons up. I'm just going to deal with this later on with a fuel additive to clean that off, but this isn't bad. You can tell this motor doesn't have a lot of miles on it. Luckily, it didn't drive it a lot, but they drove it enough to crack both heads, dumbasses. And overheating like that probably is what took the transmission out. So, uh... Yeah, that was uh, that was dumb on that guy's part. Cost me 500 bucks between the new head and getting the uh, other head redone. He went ahead. It was, I mean, it was in good shape, but since you put the brand new head on it, you might as well have them balanced out. So he uh, he did all the valve guides, seals, and all that stuff. I still use my same rocker arms and push rods. That's okay. So uh, one more thing. If these are this is a torque to yield bolts on these things. You got three. Three angles you got to do, 55, 65, and 75 degrees. Uh, let me put this out of the way. Depending on uh, how long the bolts are. I'm not a big fan of those angle gauges, so I went ahead and just bit the bullet and went ahead and bought me a torque wrench electric one that uh, does uh, foot pounds, of course, and it does degrees. This is. Uh, that's the only way to go. I mean, it. Uh, we had these heads torqued down in about 25 minutes. And uh, this was $185. And uh, the margin of error was the same as a uh, snap-on. So I went ahead and got it. And the, the ratings were real good. And Gear Wrench makes good tools. So uh, if you're going to do this, and I justified it because I've got to do the same thing to my Suburban. 
I'm still gathering parts up. I got to pull the block out, of course, and get the heads. I mean, not the heads, but the uh, crank and the block done. That's why I'm collecting all my parts up right now. I'm just not looking forward to pulling it out, but I'll have to do it. We got sand here, so I'll have to buy some uh, like 5 8 OSB and lay it down so I can roll the uh, the uh, engine hoist and be able to roll it out and then set it on an engine stand. So don't. These are just way to go. I use this thing all the time now, and I've got three other torque wrenches. Uh, I've got a quarter, three eighths, and a half inch. But man, I really like this thing. It's very accurate, and uh, it's only a three eighths because I'm not torquing it more than a uh, hundred foot pounds. That's the maximum on this. But I knew those head bolts weren't going to take a hundred foot pounds. So uh, if you're going to do this, I mean, in you could use it for everything else. I've been using it for everything else, so it's not like you're just going to use it for head bolts, but I highly recommend these gear wrenches. This is the way to go. All right, as far as uh, torquing those heads down, I took a, a head and I laid it on a piece of cardboard and stuck a screwdriver through and marked it, and then I numbered everything. So uh, you have to do 22 foot-pounds first, and then you do your angles. So what we do is we put a cross hatch mark like that. See, we haven't done the other one yet over there. But when it's an X like that, then I know that I've got every one of them. My son, he holds this and keeps track and marks them off. So uh, and it's easy to miss a head bolt. Some of them are recessed and uh, it's hard to see some of them. So I did this. Now I know mechanics, they know this stuff by heart. But I'm just a... Uh, shade tree mechanic well I'm an advanced shade tree mechanic not everybody rebuilds these old engines and uh, you can see there short ones are 55 the mediums are 65 and the long ones are 75 so we make sure that we got it torqued down right uh, I'm gonna be finishing the head up when my son gets back from in town he's got to put a new tire on one of his trucks but this this really helped I mean it, it doesn't take long to make it and uh, I just don't want to mis make a mistake. I don't want to take this stupid thing apart again. I want to be done with it because uh, when I get done with this, we're going to put ball joints on it and then uh, new front tires. So I've already got the ball joints and all the tools, puller, everything I need to do the ball joints. And uh, the ball joint front end parts I use is called Detroit Axle. You can get them on Amazon. I've, I've been buying them for quite a while and, and the stuff is really good. I, I really like it because you know you go with other brands you're gonna you go pay through the nose and on these I didn't buy the AC Delcos they're about sixty five dollars a piece and that just that's too much and like I said I've gotten good service out of Detroit Axle so I'm gonna stick with that all right all right when I get done with everything this uh, engine bay is greasy as heck and uh, Hood doesn't even have one of those insulating pads. I'm going to get one from uh, LMC. I'm going to clean this off and put that heat pad on there because it, it uh, keep your hood, your paint on the top of the hood in much better shape. But I've got to figure out what I'm going to degrease it with. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to use that kerosene-based stuff or whatever, but I, I've got to clean it out. It's just filthy in here. Um... It was undoubtedly leaking oil at one time on the last engine they had. So I just want to clean it up. I'm going to take the booster off, go ahead and sand and paint that. It's a little bit rusty in the bracket, so I'll take that off. Those are really easy, and I want to look at the booster anyway and make sure there's no brake fluid getting inside the booster uh, starting to want to go bad. Because if I see some in there, I'll just go ahead and buy me a new booster and put it on. But I'll spray paint before I put it on there where it uh, looks better. I mean, we're not making it a show truck, but... We want to keep it clean, you know, try to keep it an original uh, survivor. So uh, we still have to put a air conditioning on it. All the lines were rotted, so I just went ahead and cut all of them off. So uh, we'll do that later, but we probably won't do that until after we get the cosmetics done. Because that's, uh, that's not real important right now. So, all right. I did finally get it washed. I had to do it myself. My son works really crazy hours. So I washed it and I waxed the hood and the top of the cab. Now, uh, on older paint jobs, you'll feel little tiny bumps and stuff on it where uh, it's being out in the environment, you get a little bit of stuff on it. So I'm gonna get me some light cleaning wax, 
get it nice and smooth and then uh, I use that Meguiar's Tech Wax 2.0 that's really good wax it's easy to get on easy to get off it buffs real good so uh, I'll do that after I get this other wax done but I had to do that it, the uh, sun I just didn't want the sun to start deteriorating the uh, paint job because this is original and I don't plan it's not perfect but I don't plan on repainting it we just want to try to keep it as an original survivor now I didn't uh, you probably saw in the last video I got some tape here we bought this from a guy who lived in a uber redneck area of, of uh, the panhandle. Underneath here, he had some uh, skull stickers on there. One on the driver's side and one on the passenger. I did the driver's side first. We've been getting all the adhesive off. And when I started to pull this one off, I noticed there was some, uh, it was wanting to compress a little bit. And uh, when I pulled it off, there's five bullet holes in this door. <laughs> I don't know what the history of this truck is, but that's kind of funny. So I just covered this up, keep water from going in there. I've got to put something on the back. I'm going to put some peel and stick. i got a friend who's going to paint the door and do some other little touch-ups for 350 bucks. Since it's an original paint job, he's going to be able to match it up real good. So, uh, yeah, we found five of them, but it didn't go through the interior panel. So I imagine it hit something or they just fell in the bottom of the door. When we pull the door panel off, hopefully I can find them bullets down there in the bottom. I'm going to drill a hole through the middle of it, put them on a string, and hang them from the uh, rear view mirror. But uh, we weren't expecting that. But the guy really kind of wasn't the honest, most honest dude I bought it from. Uh, he could have mentioned that, but that's okay. You know, cosmetics, got a mirror. We're going to replace both of them. And uh, tent the windows. We've got the uh, we've got the bed lying around. You can see this bed is in really good shape. I was really surprised. It had a plastic bed liner around it, and they have a tendency to let them rust. So I've got some uh, scrapes and stuff where the bed kind of rubbed against it. I'm going to sand those off, and I've got some uh, stuff called Defender that uh, you put on rust. Works really good. I've I've got my, uh, I did a 77 Chevelle Malibu that had a little bit of rust. It was from North Ohio, but it was uh, Z-barded and had a little bit of rust underneath the trim and the bottom of the door. And that was eight years ago and uh, sold it to my brother-in-law and there's no rust coming up anywhere where they fixed it. So it's really good. It's water-based and uh, it turns the rust black and then I'll spray paint over the top of it. I'm going to put the bed back in it because we're not ready for a bed liner. And I'm going to go ahead and paint with some bed liner spray the very top of this until we get uh, we're going to get some of them plastic railings to put on it for now until he's ready to do a uh, spray and bed liner. Because like I said, we'll have to, we're going to get to the uh, cosmetics of it, but we're getting the mechanical done first because if it's real pretty and it don't run, it's useless as hell. So uh, that's where we're at. I'll probably end up uploading another video whenever I get put that uh, intake manifold on. So this is my update, part two. Oh, that was, uh, that was something. And always, you all have a good one.